How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So yes, I know I said to you guys I was going to have the conclusion for my Slicer Showdown, uh, Slicer Throwdown video this weekend. Unfortunately, as you can probably tell, um, that's not happening. I've had a bit of a family emergency and I'm not actually at home so I can't edit it, therefore I can't upload it and give it to you. So really sorry about that guys, thank you for just bearing with me. It's going to be out as soon as I can. However, I wanted to do some sort of video for you guys, so I thought it would be a good idea to do a 3D printing news video for January 2016. So let's do that. RIP Cube and Cubify. So earlier this month, 3D Systems announced they're killing off their consumer entry product range, the Cube, and Cubify, which is their paid ecosystem around it, because it has just hasn't been doing very well for them, it hasn't been profitable, so they're going to end it at the end of January 2016, which is a bit of a shame, um, you know, 3D Systems entered the market with the Cube about three years ago or so, actually they announced it at CES a couple of years ago, and it just, from day one, hasn't done very well with them, their approach towards aesthetics over function, and heavy marketing hype over actual performance, really has been their undoing. So for you guys with the Cube printers, they are saying they will continue to provide support and consumables. As you know, Cube have a proprietary cartridge, you can't use any other filament on the market. But I would expect they're going to slowly wind this down, so you might end up with a very expensive and pretty uh, 3D printer paperweight in a couple of years time. So, a bit of a kick in the ass from 3D Systems, but if they've got a product line that's doing very badly, that's how it is. It's just the Cube, by the way, not the Cube Pro. They're continuing to sell that through the 3D Systems website. But anyway, silly. Be. <laughs> 3D printing from Space Metals. This is another story from 3D Systems, and they partnered with Planetary Resources to 3D print from an asteroid, a metallic asteroid which had a high concentration of iron, nickel, and cobalt in it. So apparently this is quite common. A lot of asteroids have this uh, component structure in them, these metallic asteroids. And if that's the case, it's very similar to what they usually put through the DMLS printers anyway. So in this case, they went through a fancy extraction process and literally 3D printed metal that's not from Earth, which is crazy. <laughs> um, I really like the idea of like landing a spaceship on an asteroid and actually using the asteroid's resources to produce parts right there. That's a really futuristic idea and hopefully something we'll see in the distant future. Cool. CES 2016. Yes, CES is back and as usual the 3D printing side of CES is massive. Many companies have used CES to launch their new range of printers. For example, Ultimaker have their Ultimaker 2 Plus, which is a fairly similar name for, to be honest, a fairly similar printer. Um, nothing too inspiring there. But also we've got the MakerBot announcing their new Smart Extruder Plus, or whatever it's called. Too little too late, MakerBot, seriously. Like, it's been years and now you're saying you've got a better extruder? Sorry. But most exciting to me is the new Up Mini Plus 2, which is announced from Tier Time. And I love the Up Mini, as you guys will know. It's my favorite printer. And finally, it's finally got an upgrade, the Up Mini Plus 2. It looks pretty damn snazzy. It's still the same build volume of 120 millimeters cubed, but this time it has automatic uh, nozzle height leveling. Uh, no word on bed leveling, but we'll see. It also has Wi-Fi, which I'm not going to hold my breath for because Wi-Fi and 3D printers, in my experience, has been fairly disappointing. But it also has a touch screen, so you can finally do stuff on the printer instead of having to go via a computer, which is something I'm really looking forward to. So I will 100% have an Up Mini Plus 2 very soon, well, as soon as I can get my hands on one to do a review for you guys, because it's definitely, the Up Mini, as I said, is my favorite printer. The Plus 2 surely will um, continue to hold that torch, in my opinion. The one thing I'm not too sure on is it looks like it may have proprietary cartridges. It's a bit hard to tell in the renders that I've seen. I haven't seen any photos of the actual product. If you've been to CES 2016 and seen the Up Mini and taken a photo, send me a picture, please. I'd love to see what it actually looks like in real life. But in the renders, it looks like it may have proprietary cartridges or just cartridge holders for their spools you slide in. I'm not too sure. But either way, it looks like a great printer and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one. So thanks for watching, guys. I intend to do a news video about once a month or so, once every big bit of news for 3D printing hits. Uh, let me know in the comments if you actually enjoy this sort of videos. And again, I am sorry, so sorry the slicing video is not up yet. I, I was so tempted to give you spoilers in this video, but I'm going to hold back because I feel it really needs the in-depth video to go through all the differences between the slices. And it will be out in the next few days once I get back home and back into my usual swing of things. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, and also, so thank you so much, guys, for supporting the channel. All you guys have been using the affiliate links for Amazon and even the uh, YouTube fan funding. All of you guys who have uh, done a donation through that, 
thank you so much. It helps me a great deal, especially at the moment when I'm doing the whole move and I have all these horrible costs that I have to pay. It really helps me a great deal. And if this is your first time, definitely check out my backlog of 3D printing videos. I'm sure there'll be something there that you like. And I'll see you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye, guys.